Hello again, it is I, Derek from Tomcat Gas Training, and welcome to this video all about tightness testing using air. But before we get into this video, please could you take some time to subscribe because it helps my channel, and don't forget to hit that notification bell because you want YouTube to tell you when we're uploading videos. Hopefully you know now it's Mondays and Wednesdays. Anyway, let's stop waffling and let's get on with it and find out how to carry out a tightness test using air instead of gas. Now, before we get into the procedure, when would we actually carry out a tightness test using air? Well, basically, if we haven't got any gas. So if you're running a gas carcass and you need to test it and see whether it's uh, leaking or not, then we can use air if we haven't got gas available. One of the things you have to be aware of though is once you've carried out a tightness test using air, then we can't deem it correct until we've then carried out a tightness test using gas once it's all been connected. So we can't just solely rely on an air test and then just bang gas through it later on and say it's passed. We will need then to carry out a tightness test using the gas. So, what quick test equipment are we going to use then to do this tightness test? I'm going to be using a standard U gauge, which we use for all testing, or we could use our electronic analyzers if we wanted to, our flue gas analyzers, or our digital manometers. We can use any of those to do it. But how do we get the air into the system? Well, we use one of these, which is just basically a little pump. When you pump it, it pumps air through. So you can see here, this is my little test T I have, and you can see this has got a push fit fitting on it. Now remember, you can't have push fit on gas, but I'm testing with air, not gas. And this makes it so much easier to do a tightness test using air, because again, remember, we're not solely relying on this test, where I can just use my push fit fitting on the end of the pipe, and test the whole carcass. Because remember, I'm not gonna be testing at the meter because the meter might not even be there. This would just be connected onto a T branch or the end of the pipe to be able to do my test. So then I've got a little branch here with a valve on it to uh, be able to isolate the pump in case the pump's leaking. Now, if you, if you read um, IGM UP1B, it says if you're using air, then your test equipment needs to have an isolation valve so it stops this being pumped in more or losing air through it. So this is the perfect test point or the test T for using air. But we've also got this one. And this one's good for if we're testing or want to test onto a test nipple of a meter or of an appliance or whatever because it has three connections for us to be able to do that. So I can blank off here where it connects onto the pipework with a stop end. And then I've still got three points to be able to test. So one onto the appliance, one onto the test equipment, where this has only got two, but it hasn't got any isolation valves. So this can cause problems with this leaking. So uh, even though you can buy these, I won't be advising to use them unless you're in desperate situation and you need to get onto a test nipple using another bit of hose. So, that's the test equipment we're going to be using. So, let's get into the uh, workshop and find out exactly how we're going to use this and how we do the tightness test procedure. Come on then, let's get on with it. Now, I've got my uh, test equipment connected to this old open flued boiler. So I've removed my little push fit fitting because I've taken the gas valve off the boiler, or the isolation cock off the boiler, and there's a compression fitting on the end there. So I've just connected my test equipment to where it's connected. Now, all the appliances are isolated on this uh, bay we've got here. So the fire is isolated, the cook has been disconnected from its bayonet, so they're all disconnected. So we're only testing the carcass up to the gas meter. 
Now with the gas meter, I've just isolated the ECV. So I haven't disconnected it from the gas supply. So what I'm going to do now is make sure my U gauge is levelled and zeroed. Which it is. And now I can slowly pump the air using my pump into the system. Now, unlike a normal tightness test, you would do a let by test first. 7 to 10 millibars for one minute. And no permissible rise more than 0.25 millibars on a U gauge. Because we're using a U gauge. But... We're not testing let by because the ECV we're not testing because it's not working. So we're, t we're simulating there's no gas whatsoever, there's nothing connected. So we don't need to do a let by, we're just going to go straight to temperature stabilisation, which we're going to do between 20 and 21 millibars for one minute, and then we're going to go into our two minute test at 20 to 21 millibars. So let's get on with it. I'm just slowly pumping it in until we get to 20, between 20 and 21. Oh. It seems to be dropping. So, we've got a leak on this installation. So, what do we do about that? Well, this is where air comes in. Because what we can do now is, I can pump this up to 28, 29 millibars, nearly 30 millibars, if we go above 30, it's going to come out of the top. That's going to increase the pressure into the system to make it easier for me to find the leak. But if you're on your own, it's hard. If you've got two people, you could have somebody constantly going doing that. So what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to pump this up and see if I can find this leak. Because it's just dropping straight back down. So after a bit of searching, this is what I found. The actual test nipple, the actual body of the test nipple, is snapped. So whether the trainees have tightened it up that tight, They've actually split the test nipple down here. So that's how air has helped us find this leak. And you can see it quite clearly there. So now I've isolated that gas meter. I've put a blank in the actual meter so it won't go through to the test nipple. Now we're only testing the carcass. So make sure again I've got everything open and I'm just going to slowly pump some air into the U gauge and take it just over the 20 millibars. There you go, just about 20 and a quarter millibars. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to turn off this valve here, what's feeding the pump, so in case the pump passing, so that stops us losing any air through that way. And we're just going to do the tightness test. So I'm going to time it for one minute stabilisation and see what we come up with. So let's get my watch going. And then once we've done the one minute stabilisation, we're going to go into the two minute test. Now that's the end of the temperature stabilisation. And if I look a little bit more closely, I can see it's not budged an inch. So it's not risen, it's not fallen. Now if it has have risen, then I need to drop it back down to 20 millibars, and if it had fallen, I need to top it back up to the 20 millibars. Now I've got my two minute test, get the watch going again, and I'll see you in two minutes. So that's the end of the two minute test. Let's see if it's dropped. And it hasn't moved a muscle. And because we're testing the carcass with no appliances connected, we're allowed no permissible drop. But we're testing with air anyway, so no drop. So, that's the tightness test procedure, using air. Now, that was tightness testing using air on natural gas. But we could also use air for testing an LPG line. But we use different pressures, and different times really. 
So we're not doing a let by test again, but we do do temperature stabilization. So the pressures we're going to be doing are at are 45 millibars. And our temperature stabilization time changes from one minute to up to five minutes. So you're looking to see whether you get a stable reading or not. And then our tightness test again is carried out for two minutes at 45 millibars. So that's what you would do if you were doing LPG. If you want me to do any more videos on LPG, then just put the down in the comments, guys, and I'll see what I can do. But if you've liked this video, why don't you give me that thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below. If you've not subscribed to my channel, then please subscribe because it helps. And don't forget to hit that notification bell because I think you know by now we release them on Mondays and Wednesdays. All i got left to say is thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one, guys. Cheers.